Hey guys, welcome back to Bum Knives. This is Chris. Uh, today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be working on repairing a broken garage door. This issue turned out to be a plastic gear inside of the motor, which apparently is very common. I have two garage doors in my house, and the first one broke, and wouldn't you know it, uh, within a week before I'd even gotten the part, the other one broke. It ended up being the exact same issue. Uh, but since I'd already made the first repair, I figured maybe I could walk you guys through it doing the second one since I've already have experience doing it the first one. A good indicator that you have the same problem as me would be if you push the garage door button and nothing happens. You hear the motor running, so you know the motor's good, uh, but there's no movement of the garage door up or down. All right, so let's get into this. Okay, I don't have any tripods or anything, so here I'm just trying to give you the best view I can of what the garage door motor looks like. Um, mine happens to be a Craftsman, but they're all pretty much the same. A lot of other brands are the exact same, even on the inside for the gear. Okay, this is a half horsepower motor. Uh, let me um, preface this um, tutorial by saying that I'm not any kind of a mechanic or garage door repair man, so you would be doing this repair at your own risk, but I learned the same way you guys are probably learning by watching a video of someone else. Okay, for safety, the very first thing you want to do is unplug the motor. After you have it unplugged, you're going to remove the plastic cover over the light bulb section. Basically, you just push in from each side with your hands and it should snap right out. It's pretty simple and easy for that. Okay, now you're going to remove the metal frame. Most models will have two screws on the top on each side. Okay, then you're going to move to the front and back plastic side. On that side, you just want to remove the bottom screws, not the top screws. And just for clarity, when I'm referring to the plastic side, I'm talking about the side that has the light bulb and its opposite side. The other, the other two sides are covered with a metal cover. So the plastic side is the one that's going to have the coarse threads. Okay, one thing I need to mention, when you're doing this repair, you're going to need plenty of light. So make sure if you have any windows that you open them and that you're doing the repair in the middle of the day. Uh, if you have two garage doors like I do, you could leave one open. You will want to make sure your garage door is released from being able to open. So make sure that's unlocked. Um, you also want to use a pair of vice grip locking pliers to just lock the trolley in its position. Okay, with the cover off the motor and the trolley locked in position, you can look above the motor and remove the cap over the sprocket. Now you want to mark the position of your chain. Make sure you use something that will write on a greasy surface. Just behind the sprocket, there's a guide rail for the chain on each side. I found it useful to mark each side of that to keep the position. It's not going to hurt to mark it in a couple other spots either, just to be sure. I found it helpful to mark the chain tightening uh, mechanism also. Then you're just going to want to release the chain by undoing those two nuts that you see there. Just undo the back nut until you have enough slack that you can remove the chain from the sprocket. As you see here, I just left the chain hanging down, but still inside the chain guides. Going back to the motor, you'll find three 5 16 bolts holding the uh, sprocket assembly, gear assembly in place. It's very easy to get to two of the screws with a, a socket driver that is 5 16 inch. Um, for some reason, my socket set goes to one size just above 5 16 so the other one I had to improvise and use um, a socket driver I had with a wrench in order to get that loose.
there is a gear on the very bottom of the assembly that just has a clip. You will need to pull the clip out by pulling each side and then uh, pulling the bottom gear off of the assembly before you'll be able to remove the whole assembly of the gear. As you see here, I've already pulled the two sides of the clip um, so that way I could film it because it's impossible to film it uh, while pulling it out at the same time. Okay, after you have that clip off, that bottom gear will come right off and then you're ready to go up to the top and pull the whole assembly out from the top. It will take a little bit of force. Um, just be careful and rock it back and forth. Uh, once you get it most of the way up, if you put it at an angle, you should be able to get it through the hole at the top with no problems. All right, once you have the gear assembly out, you're gonna to wanna to wipe it out, clean it out, um, maybe take a vacuum or a dust buster in there and get as much as the particles out. Cause usually when this is your issue, you're gonna have a lot of plastic pieces down in there. It's important to note that the replacement part is made for many different brands and manufacturers. Um, it should fit most models, but the holes don't always line up with every manufacturer, which was the case um, for me. Even if you are lucky and the holes do match up, they do not come um, already tapped for the, the screws to go back in. So uh, you will need to tap the screws. If the holes do match perfectly on your assembly or if you're drilling uh, new ones, I found 10 32nd taps seem to fit the threads. I'm not sure if that's the proper size, but it did seem to fit the threads on mine. Two of the holes lined up perfectly on my assembly although the third one did not. I decided to go with just using the two screws to put it back together. I'll show you guys that in a moment. Although a garage door is very heavy, the direction of pull on this assembly is not up and down. So two screws is more than sufficient, in my opinion, of course. All right, now we're ready to put our new assembly back in. You wanna remove the clip and the bottom gear. Your new assembly should have come with some grease. You wanna make sure to grease the parts very good. You wanna grease the top for the sprocket cause that's metal on metal. And then you wanna grease the two plastic gears, you, the main one that we're replacing. Uh, some kits you can just replace the plastic gear and not this whole assembly. If you are doing that, um, just note that those usually do not come with enough grease. So you're gonna need to purchase some extra grease for that if you don't have any. And you want to grease the bottom plastic gear, the one that had the clip that we taken off. And you want to grease your worm drive. You want to put a lot of grease on all of these working moving parts. And lastly, you want to grease the hole that the shaft goes down through, down at the bottom. Now you're ready to put your whole assembly back in. Um, just put it at an angle to go through the top hole and put it down from, from the top down to the bottom should go back in and fit um, pretty nicely with the worm drive and the gear in the bottom. Once you have your assembly back in, you're going to put that bottom gear on and place the clip back in, holding it in place. With everything fit in place, if you go to the top, you'll notice that you can slide this silver piece to line up the holes. So even though it's already in place, you can move this around to make sure that the screw holes line up. The large square holes need to be front and back so that way when you're finished the plastic cover will go back over the sprocket. Like I said before I'm just using two screws to put it back together. I didn't feel like drilling out another hole and tapping it. Um, but what I did do though um, was put a locking nut on the bottom of the screw and I put the screws down from the top uh, instead of going from the bottom up like they originally were. Okay, now we're ready to put our chain back on. Uh, you wanna make sure the back is um, in the flywheel, the wire is in the flywheel, and that the chain is straight the same way that it came off. Look where your marks are. Uh, make sure everything's relatively lined up in the same spot. That should help with everything going back the same way it came off. 
tighten your chain tensioner. You don't want to over tighten it. You want your chain about halfway between the bar, uh, about a half inch from the top, but you definitely don't want to over tighten it. You don't want an over tightened chain because that will break your assembly, but you don't want it too loose either. If anything, I would err on just slightly slack. We did mark our chain tensioner, but there's a good chance you are going to need to make some adjustments to this once everything's back together because the way the chain fits on the sprocket doesn't always go in the exact same holes it did before. Okay, now you're going to go remove your vice grips from the trolley. Um, make sure you remove those. You're going to go plug um, your motor back in and you should be ready for a test trial. Okay, here's the initial test. As you see, it's working good. It's going down, but then it does go back up. So to fix that, you just go to your adjustment um, for the down screw, turn it one full turn counter, or excuse me, clockwise, and that will solve that problem. And I also needed to adjust the chain and tighten it up just a little bit um, after this initial test, but that was it. Now we're done. Okay, all that there's left now is to put the sprocket cover back on and your side panel and your plastic cover, and that should be it. You should have a repaired garage door. Okay, guys, if this video helped, please like, subscribe, share, and join me where normally we'll be exploring the world of magic.